Please welcome Richard Taylor, Director of Membership Experience for the Australian Federal Travel Agents and his guests to the stage. Thank you. Apologies for the delay. We were given a little bit of a time, um, slightly later time, so we popped down for a coffee. All we'll blame Richard, uh, all right. We're back now. It's a lovely cup of tea. Um, welcome. There's a few faces I recognise, uh, many I don't, but we're from the travel industry. We come in peace, just so you know. Um, <laughs> I'd like to first of all introduce our guests. Um, but first of all, uh, the travel industry is full of acronyms. And uh, if you want any demonstration of that, I'm from AFTA, he's from TAG, he's from FCM, and she's from GBT, which uh, some of you will know, but I'm not going to make any assumptions, so we will explain everything in full detail to you. Um, so we'll start with an introduction, please. We'll start with Patricia, ladies first. Uh, Patricia, could you tell everyone who you are and what you do, please? I think my mother would be very proud of me being called a lady. Um, I'm Patricia Waghorn. I'm from American Express Global Business Travel. I'm going to differentiate myself and say I'm from Amex GBT. So <laughs> um, I am the Director of Public Affairs and Communications. Um, I actually have come to travel uh, a little bit later than the rest of the crew on the stage. I've been in since I joined in 2019, so there might be a collective groan around the <laughs> great time to join travel. Um, and um, before that, I was in pharmaceutical and financial services and uh, politics. So I have I come with a different bent on travel. I have the experience and insights of our clients. So that certainly was my pitch to get into the travel game, and I love it. It's such an interesting interesting industry to be a part of and I'm very glad to join you in these last few years. I'll hand over to um, Renos. Russes. Renos. Hello everyone, Renos, uh, I'm Renos Rolagas and apparently I'm the head of account management at AFTA. Uh, so it looks like I've lost my job at FCM. So um, congratulations, yeah. welcome, pleasure. welcome. Am I calling you boss? For a experienced <laughs> Hello, boss. industry veteran. I'm your man. Um, I'm the head of account management at FCM. FCM's part of the Flight Centre Travel Group. FCM looks after large to medium enterprise corporate customers nationally and multinationally. Um, I'm not going to say how long I've been in the industry because uh, the grey hair probably gives it away. But a long time, 30 years uh, since I left school, and about 23 years at uh, Flight Centre. Over to you, Brett. Okay, thanks, Renos. Well, if your uh, grey hair gives you away, my no hair certainly gives me away as well. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Brett Thompson. I'm the head of corporate sales at TAG, formerly known as the Appointment Group, which some of you may know uh, us as uh, existing still within GDS rate loading. Um, yeah, TAG is uh, a travel company headquartered in London. Uh, we, we have like five niche specialty, speciality areas of travel management, being corporate. Um, music touring, uh, film and television production events, so PCO business, and as well as a high-end leisure. Um, yeah, TAG been in Australia now for since 2013, but we've existed since 1988 when we were first founded in London. Um, yeah, we've experienced some some rapid growth um, since COVID and actually during COVID. So it's a it's a very topical and interesting time to be talking about this stuff. We decided to leave Brett to last because he deals with rock stars and movie crews and Netflix and, and that sort of thing, don't you, Brett? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's the sexier side of our business. So, um, you know, I'm just in boring old corporate travel, but uh, I, get to, I get to occasionally brush, rub shoulders with them. All right, so we'll start. And, and the first thing we, I wanted to ask you was, the title that we were given uh, prior was why corporate travel hasn't bounced back to pre-COVID levels. But chatting to several people, including yourselves, we might challenge that a little bit. Um, Renos, I'm going to start with you, if that's all right. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, that? Yeah, uh, it has bounced back to well and truly above pre-COVID levels for us. Um, in every metric that we see, whether it be... Um, hotel nights, number of bookings, the yield obviously driven by the demand at the moment is high, but that will come back down. Domestic is certainly very strong for us, for sure. 
um, and we can see we continue to see whatever the new normal is. We all had a pretty ter uh, terrible time last year. I'm sure all of you will agree, trying to get the industry back to some sort of normality after the chaos of COVID. But we're definitely seeing all our metrics are significantly up. International's taking some time to return. It's uh, it's starting to really get fired up now that China's opened up. But generally, um, all of the metrics that we see has suggested that it is definitely well and truly back. Patricia? Uh, we're very much a, a similar sort of story. Uh, we, in American Express, uh, global business travel. Obviously, we're business travel. We go across um, uh, aviation, um, so booking, booking corporate travel, booking accommodation. We also do meetings and events. Um, as well. So um, I've got some figures here actually. So globally um, uh, we've improved our, our hotel content. So we've, we have our propriety software platforms, Agencia, you might know that brand name, Agencia and Neo. Um, and uh, what we're seeing, uh, particularly in our Agencia platform, is um, quite a strong um, SME segment, quite a bit of growth there. And I've got a nice little stat here for you guys. Um, Notary Agencia, 111% over quarter one, in, over in quarter one comparative in 2019. So that's quite, quite a difference. So <laughs> to that point, we are seeing demand. Um, and then APAC is really a standout region for us as well. Um, so at 114% year-on-year growth um, in the quarter. I mean, that's primarily driven by HK, Singapore and China um, opening as well. So um, when you look at EMA and the US, you're looking at the 50s and 60% 60, 60 growth in the hotel quarters. So still great growth. So we refute the question on that one. <laughs> Over to you, Brent. Uh, me next? Okay. Um, yeah, well, we're a slightly different proposition to my two learned colleagues here. So um, they're a little bit more large market than us. Um, TAG is probably well known as a boutique um, and we are probably widely regarded as an entertainment travel company. However, this is not true. Um, our corporate business has significantly grown as well, but we are well known for actually uh, experiencing growth through COVID. So um, in 2020, we had an increase from 2019 of 10% in hotels. So that was largely towards the back of 2020. Um, and as some of you may know, the federal government had uh, rebates in place for film and TV production uh, to be managed in this country. So there was a lot of the likes of Warner Brothers, Marvel, um, coming out to Australia to, to choose um, our country as, as somewhere to film. Uh, and so we saw, you know, a real bucking of the trend in that space. Um, how do we manage that from a hotel perspective? In, in many cases, we had to facilitate uh, travel bubbles. Um, so working with entire resorts to, to facilitate that for the, the cast and crew. Um, and then we, we move into 2021, um, which was a real boom year for us. Um, and it's quite surprising, obviously, because it was still COVID, but we had a 300% increase in 2021. Um, and then 2022, another 270% increase. So when you're a little bit smaller, the numbers in growth can be a little bit larger than uh, my colleagues here. But um, yeah, and we continue to see that growth across all facets of our business. Um, you know, we have been successful in acquiring a lot of new business as well. So we are on a, on a rapid incline. Um, just as a coverall, though, in case there are delegates here who are not seeing that level of growth, and I'm sure there will be, if that's the case, what factors do you think would be causing a slow rate of growth? I'm going to start back with you again, Renos, if that's all right. Uh, I think cost, for sure. Everyone knows that the, you know, your average rates are higher now, so budgets are not stretching as much as they used to, so we're finding a lot of clients are seeking alternatives to the traditional content that they book, so Airbnbs becoming a little bit more prominent, uh, service departments that aren't serviced by the major suppliers uh, in our industry, definitely seeing that it is 100% a factor. I think sustainability, which we'll touch on later, is also becoming a huge factor in people's decision making. And I think too, the other thing that we've seen is that, and it'd be interesting to see if, if, if the audience agrees, is we're seeing people staying away less. So the number of people 
traveling for one night, I think has nearly doubled as opposed to two or three nights. And look, I'm, this, I'm a road warrior, I travel a lot and I don't want to be away from home too much. So I try and do everything in one night, get in, get out and, and, and get home. So that, that's certainly... Don't, don't say that here. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wrong, wrong crowd. <laughs> oh, Patricia? Yeah, I'm going to say, um, look, cost, I don't think there's an industry around that cost isn't a, a factor. Um, and I think that, you know, if you hear um, inflationary pressures around the world going on, you hear wars happening, every, you know, it's not, it's not a pleasant story, obviously. Um, so there's going to be some cost um, pressures on, the, on, on a world scale, on a global scale. Um, so, so cost is always going to be a factor. Uh, clients are putting the pressure on, um, and if they're not getting answers from the, the bigger chains, they're actually looking at the smaller chains, so they're not, um, the, the, you know, they are looking at alternatives, and, and great. Um, I guess um, sustainability, when it comes to sustainability, and yes, we will talk about that a bit later, uh, they're looking for a value partner as well, so it's not just about the hardcore dollar and dollars and cents, they're looking for somebody who can partner with them as well, so... Yep. Uh, and Brett, you, you, your company has a, a di again a different take on this because you often you've mentioned to me that you hire out entire hotels uh, for various things. What's the difference with you? Yeah, look, I think it, I mean there's a number of facets. You know, if we're talking about that kind of event space, and when we say a, an event, we could be talking about an, an A list for a music tour, right? So Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters. You know, we're, we're looking to, to sort of contract them and. Um, you know, when we're doing that, it is an entire property that we're that we're booking out. Um, the same happened with U2. You know, when they toured in 2019. So, um, you know, that side of our business, in terms of the the sourcing of the content, is is um, I mean, it's 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 obviously booming. Everyone's going back to concerts now, so that's all really fun. Um, and 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 that part of our business, which is film and TV production, is kind of leaning a little bit more on the long stay. Um, and we do have some long stay in corporate as well. So I think um, there's, diff there's, there's definitely different sort of facets to the way that we look at our relationships with our suppliers. And these are very, very important to us. Um, you know, they manage our, our livelihood at the end of the day. So, you know, for us, um, you know, when we go out to, to discuss our rates with our um, preferred suppliers, it's, it's definitely about, you know, those different um, areas of, where, of which we are sourcing um, content. So, yeah, it's an interesting one, but I think, you know, touching on the costs, um, Patricia and Renos have, have added, I think, you know, we are seeing, especially probably more so in that SME space in corporate, um, a little bit more of a conservative approach, particularly from finance professionals. So, they're looking at what was done for their business during COVID, you know, well, that was done via Teams or Zoom. So, do you really need to travel? Um, so, therefore, you know, some of that uh, perhaps not essential travel, you know, we're seeing a little bit less of that, but it doesn't mean to say that, you know, it hasn't bounced back because we, we, we see a range of different um, industry sectors uh, within our business and our customer base, but, you know, some of them are sort of saying they want to spend COVID's budget, you know, going forward. So I'm sure you would all love to get hold of those customers and, yeah, we want to we wanna keep hold of them as well. But, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting time. Um, I'd like to ask you about the travellers themselves. Um, this audience may benefit from your insights on what you're seeing in terms of trends in what travellers want and need. Um, I'll mix it around a bit. I'll start again back with you, Brett, if that's okay. Yeah, I think, you know, if you, you break down the personas, um, you know, and I totally agree with what Renault says. I think people are trying to achieve more with less. Um, you know, we probably got used to, to not travelling through COVID, so therefore getting back on a plane, gosh, put your hand up if you went through an airport and said, I'm never doing this again. It was just a nightmare. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's still, there's still presenting some challenges, but you know, you try and get it done in less period of time. So they're staying less nights. Um, and, it, and then it comes back to the C-level executives, you know, so they're probably looking at our five-star partners um, and, and maybe there's gonna be less of them traveling. So it might still be the MD. Um, it may be not traveling with his head of sales or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I think it's, yeah, we're seeing a real different trend across the different personas of, of travel for business. Okay, um, Reynolds? 
I, I agree. Um, I think teams for You can everyone, disagree if you want to. Is yeah. anyone sick of teams? Who's here? Who's sick of hearing you're on mute? I mean, you can't do that face to face. Um, so I, I think certainly for customers, they want to get in front of people, like you would with your customers and your prospects. People want to just be face to face after three years behind screens. So we're definitely seeing customers trying to grow sales and connect with their customers and their teams. So definitely that's quite important. Um, I think to the digital experience and kudos to many of you in the room that have invested in the digital experience for the traveller. Um, you know, self-check-in, online, all that stuff is really important. We have it at airports all the time, so it should be prevalent in, in, the, in the hotel industry as well. And we're definitely seeing that younger generation just want to get in and out quickly, easily, in a, you know, without any inefficiencies, having to fill in pieces of paper about your email and so forth. So I think those are the key factors that we're seeing. I think what we saw um, – oh, sorry, I didn't wait to ask. I just jumped in. Uh, what we saw uh, is as soon as people could travel, they did. Um, uh, as soon as they uh, could meet people, they did. And quite frankly, um, you know, if the – sorry if there are any CFOs in the room right now, but, you know, use Zoom is only going to last us so far. It's gonna, only going to take you so far. And I think people are going to get sick of hearing it um, and if they're not already. Um, so uh, it's – and it's evidenced in our, in our meetings and events division. Uh, we've seen um, – uh, our small uh, SME uh, side meetings and events, small meetings grow um, uh, when to uh, quite quickly. Um, it's our fastest growing division in, in that area. Um, overall, um, our projective um, recovery of our pipeline, it's trending around 85% of 2019 levels. So that tells us that People want to meet, they want to meet now, and they want to get together. They want to collaborate. They want to talk to each other. Uh, I can't emphasise that enough. So it's good news for us. It's good news for our industry. And it's a really exciting time. I'm excited. <laughs> but that's pretty clear. Um, are we done on that subject anymore about the individual I could keep talking, but I don't know, I think everyone's hearing me all the time. Okay. Um, now, sustainability is something that you've all mentioned to me when, when we spoke. I, I'm going to guess that a lot of these people uh, have, you know, they hear a lot about sustainability, uh, but we thought we'd come at it from a perspective of what you are being told by the companies and people that you deal with. Um, who would like to go first? Should we, should we? You can go. Oh, well, go Renos. Okay, right, yeah, sure. Um, look, I think you all would know from your own customers that this is now uh, a real thing. I think three, four years ago, sustainability was a little paragraph in a travel policy somewhere buried on page 76 of something that said, oh, well, we have to be sustainable, etc." But now it's real. It's absolutely real in any facet of any customer, uh, their air, hotel, car. And um, I think the key for a lot of our customers is the visibility of the hotels that they're using and what you guys are doing to get to net zero. And you would see it also in the tenders that you guys have to um, participate in, certainly in the corporate market. Once upon a time, it'd be one or two questions about some light bulbs. Now it's really deep stuff about your suppliers, your ESG, or your diversity policies, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's real. It's real now. And I feel like we nearly skipped something because before COVID, it was just a, a thing, maybe a few offsetting. I think even Brett mentioned it in a call yesterday, offsetting's feels like it was 10 years ago, doesn't it? It's, we're past that now. It's, it's really, really serious around customers making informed decisions and they're gonna, be, they're gonna make decisions on whether they're utilising your properties based on this in the future 100% if they're not already doing so. Yep, absolutely agree. Um, so uh, I think clients are, um, are looking for a partner to um, work on sustainability solutions with them uh, and it also, it's going, all over the supply chain, so they're looking quite in depth um, across your supply chain. So when it looks, when they're looking at a meeting event, they're looking at who the supplier of the food is, where it's grown, how it's grown, um, all quite in depth um, levels. Uh, and for for us, uh, travel can be a key differentiator uh, when it comes to sustainability. Uh, we often think travel and sustainability don't don't match, but they're actually they're mismatched, but they're not. It can it can be quite a, a good pitch when it comes to um, when it comes to sustainability. You spoke to me about greenwashing when we spoke before. 
Anything to say on that? I, I think, I think that that's a, that's a, it's a hot topic, absolutely. And um, I think clients are looking to have expert advice from their TMCs. And one of the ways that we do that, um, and you guys do it as well, um, is uh, you, you're looking at the, um, the corporate governments of the programs that you provide. Um, so, you know, uh, Amex GBT is a Platinum Eco Vardis rated. Um, the programs that we, we provide are rated. So we're very, you, you help me out here, Renis. I don't have the terminology, do you? I'm not an expert in it, well, uh, back to you on that. <laughs> but but the guy, you know, we've got a whole business consulting team um, who provides a whole program um, to help clients understand the ratings and make sure that uh, you don't have any of those sorts of problems, well, and that's the expertise people are looking for. And Brett, yeah, I'll have a crack at it. Um, yeah, look, I think it's it's so important. It's it's a real passion of mine. Um, I, I think when we decided to partner with. Earthcheck, who are a scientific benchmarking advisory to travel and tourism. Um, you know, we knew we were going to be on a long path, um, and many of the hotel groups that are a part of that that business, you know, are, are a part of the same same journey. You know, for us, um, you know, like my colleagues here, it's it's about providing our customer with all the reporting, um, all the calculations around every element of their travel, um, and and being able to provide that to them. And then what we're seeing is, depending on the level of advancement, I suppose, in terms of the, the individual corporate's CSR policy, you know, we're seeing them come to us and sort of say, well, this is what we do as a business. We, we source fashion, you know, we, we, we source fabric in a certain country. And, you know, what would you suggest? Well, you know, we can't make it. Um, a suggestion to them other than to say, point out that there are plenty of programs out there, out there for them to choose to use their carbon credits. The carbon economy is a thing. It is a real thing. Um, Blackstone in the US recently invested $400 million um, in a business which basically tracks uh, carbon emissions, or all, all sorts of emissions, um, and then is an advisory to corporates in terms of how they can go and spend that money for good. Because that then, you know, is circular. It comes back to the boards of those businesses and they can make better decisions around their business, what they're doing and their long-term growth. So it's, it's meant to be not a profitable thing, but it really is a profitable thing, right? Um, and you guys are doing a fantastic job, I have to say, in the hotel industry, you know, uh, in, in terms of sort, of sort of taking steps around this and the sustainable journey that you're all on, you know. Don't know whether the last time it was that I stayed in a hotel where they still had one of those little plastic shampoo bottles. I didn't need to shampoo my hair, but um, yeah, it's you know Same. they're all yeah <laughs> they're all they're all sort of you know recyclable material and, and all that sort of thing. So, um, but you know th those those footprints, as you would know, it's not just about that. It's 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 measuring your waste. It's measuring your electricity, your your gas, all that sort of stuff. So we're we're part of a journey whereby you know we're we're looking at at working with Earthcheck in terms of ranking around sustainability and helping our customers to make better choices to travel for good effectively. It's more prominent in RFPs now than it was. Yes. Yeah, and I'll just actually add something which might be of interest to this group is that we've got a couple of customers leading the way in thinking around how they manage this. So you would know that customers have a travel budget, you know, you can spend 8 million, 4 million, 1 million, but we've got a couple of customers moving away from that and moving to a carbon budget. So what they're saying is you have 10,000 kilos to emit and you cannot emit any more than that. And that's going to be really interesting for our industry to manage because right now the data probably isn't as deep enough as it needs to be but they're going to come to you guys and say, well, we're not going to give you 100 room nights. We want to spend less than 10,000 kilos on emissions or whatever yeah. it might be. Well, well on that, there, there, I believe there are actually, um, you know, trains in Europe where you could pay with your carbon credits. So you could say, oh, this, you know, Paris to Geneva is 0.19 grams of carbon or whatever it may be. But yeah. I did not know that. Um, I think that brings us to the end. Uh, we're probably, how are we doing for time, Adrian? I know you're running slightly behind, so we're... We're good? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I got, the, I got the, the neck thing. It's quite brutal. Yeah. So we're very grateful for your time. Thank, thank you for listening to us. Um, most importantly, thank you so much to Brett, Renos, and Patricia for joining us, and I hope you have a lovely thank conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Okay.